Hey everyone, it's Hazel West, and I'm here with my, um, I guess this is the April reading wrap-up. Uh, once again, pretty late. Um, now, April was, like, a ridiculously busy month for me, so I actually didn't read more than five books. But I read five really good books, so that, it wasn't really, like, a bad reading month. I just didn't get around to reading so many books. Um, I was trying to finish up my latest novel and get it edited and everything so that took up a lot of time plus I was doing a lot of stuff for my new Etsy store so yeah it pretty much I didn't get a lot of reading time but that's okay um because I always pick up a lot more books during the summer so I'm not gonna really worry about it so the first book I picked up in um, March was, or excuse me, April, was um, Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis, and this was my buddy read with my friend Mara at the Reading Hedgehog, um, and because um, we both really, like, we decided we needed, like, a historical fiction, and we had been wanting to read this one since it came out, so we have decided to pick this one up, and um, anyway, as is typical with Ruta Sepetis, I absolutely love this book. I thought it, I thought she just does such a good job of like portraying the time period and just like making it so realistic. But at the same time, she doesn't go like into an overabundance of detail on anything like some historical authors will. And um, so I always just really appreciate her writing style, which is really simple, but really impactful at the same time and I loved um I loved all the characters and that she chose to write the points of view of well I mean there was one character who was like really creepy but I liked the perspective that he gave um but apart from him all the other characters were really really likable and enjoyable to read and I just continue to love her books and I cannot wait to see what she comes up with next um, hopefully more World War II books because I think that's what she does amazingly. Um, I think I ended up giving it about, I think I probably gave this five out of five stars. Honestly, at this point, I can't remember, but, um, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Um, the next two I actually had to already bring back to the library, so I don't have them with me, but the next book I read was Firebrand by Jillian Phillips. And this was the first book in um, her, uh, I think it's the Rebel Angels trilogy, but it may, may be a series. I don't know. Anyway, it's kind of like a fairy world fantasy, historical fantasy novel series. Um, anyway, the first book um, is, it's, it's kind of interesting because it's set like in the fairy world. Like, the characters are fairy characters, but they're not really, like, traditional fairy characters. They're kind of more just, like, warriors and immortal, and I don't know. They're, it's not really, like, um, too different from our world, but, um, you know, there's, like, some kind of magic stuff, and, um, mostly, though, they just are warriors. Um, but anyway, the first one, um, was not too bad. I ended up, I think, doing it uh, like three and a half out of five stars and it was it followed the story of um, two brothers so it was also a brother story which is why I also enjoyed it um, and essentially um, they end up angering the um, the queen and she sends them to like the human world um, where essentially it's like um, it never really says, but it's pretty much, it's like 16, 1700 Scot- actually, no, I think it was, um, 1600 Scotland, because I'm pretty sure it was, like, during the Covenanter Wars, um, and because I think there were a couple mentions of that in there. And anyway, it was, like, during the witch-burning era, so that was kind of, like, you know, going on, and of course, because they were from, like, a different world- they were kind of pegged as, like, weird and therefore should be burned as witches and all that. Um, anyway, so it was, yeah, it was an interesting series. In reality, for a fantasy book, it was actually really pretty slow, in my opinion. 
like there was some actiony parts, but otherwise, it was just kind of, you know, it it was more about character development, which didn't really bother me. Um, I I did enjoy the characters a lot. I liked both the brothers and their uh, relationship, and um, I liked the other characters that came into the story as well. Um, so I. I probably will end up continuing the series eventually, but I think it's one of those that's kind of like each book focuses on different characters, and this one seems to like have, I don't know if it's like time travel stuff now after the first book, which is kind of weird, so I don't know if I really want to finish it, but um, I'd at least like to pick up the next book and see what it's about, because I did enjoy the first one. So the next book I read after that was um, Hunted by Megan Spooner, which is the new Beauty and the Beast retelling that has been um, all over booktube and all over Goodreads. And um, so I really wanted to pick that up because I, I really do love Beauty and the Beast retellings. And um, this one sounded just really different and interesting. And so I decided to pick it up at, from the library and I really did end up enjoying it. Like. It was it was definitely unique, and I really liked how um, the author took a kind of a different twist with it, and actually added some um, uh, not Romanian folklore. I'm getting it confused with another book, but kind of like um, you know stuff from uh, like Russia, kind of that kind of folklore, um, which is really really cool because I don't think I've ever read a Beauty and the Beast retelling with that uh, in it. So that, and I really, really liked the main character because I think she, she was a very strong um, heroine, but at the same time she didn't have the annoying attitude that most heroines have. And she had a really good relationship with her sisters and I appreciated that as well because like I, yeah, after, still, after, I am still, like, scarred from reading Winter Song, so pretty much I just read a lot of retellings. I've been reading a lot of retellings recently because I just want to, like, erase that from my memory. Um, but this one actually was the first retelling that I read after Winter Song. Actually, that was why Mar, Mar and I needed to read some historical fiction. That was what made us need to read that. So, um, yeah, but after... After that, I, I've actually thankfully found some really good retellings to read, so this was one of them, and this kind of broke me out of the, um, the horrible, horrible reading slump that Winter Song put me in because it was just so bad. Um, so yeah, I, I really did enjoy it, and I thought that the relationship between her and the Beast was a really interesting one in this. Um, and it also kind of reminded me of a retelling of like East of the Sun, West of the Moon. Um, and that, that, so it was kind of reminded me of that. I don't know if because it was like in the snowy, it was kind of like snowy too. Um, and it, in, in reality, that story kind of is like Beauty and the Beast, but so it kind of reminded me of both of those stories, but it was really good. And so I would, if you haven't picked it up yet because you don't like reading hyped books, which I don't really, um, this one actually was good and I would recommend it. I think I ended up giving it four out of five stars. After that, I picked up The Beast is an Animal by uh, Paternel Von Arsdale, and I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, depending. It's either Paternel or Paternelle, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this I think is a debut novel. Um, yes, it is a debut novel that just came out this year, which I had not heard of at all until, um, I think Mara bought it and she had it on one of her book hauls. And I was like, that sounds really good. So I had to pick it up from the library. And, um, anyway, this one is, it's not a retelling, but it's written like an old folk tale or kind of like a grim style fairy tale. Um, and so it's essentially, it is about this, okay, well, the backstory is that there were these two twin girls, and they were pushed out of the community with their family 
when they were little because they had, like, the mark of evil or whatever, um, that, and, um, and so they were thrown out, and then they essentially became evil, whether or not it was because of that or because of anything else, anyway, but they, essentially, they become soul eaters, and, um, they eventually they go back to the village that they were, uh, thrown out of and essentially kill everyone except people under 15. So the main character is a girl, I'm gonna have to look up her name, Alice, who was only a little girl at the time, so she didn't, so they didn't kill her, but, and she was found by a tradesman who came through the village, like, the morning after they killed everyone, and found her and the other children, and then brought them to another town nearby, um, where essentially they become, like, um, servants to everyone, because it's kind of like, I don't know, it's, um, it's, I don't, it's not, like, a dystopian community, um, but it's, you know, it's kind of like one of those where it's run by, um, a lot of people who, or, you know, it's, it's very tightly run. But anyway, so they make the kids from the village watch the walls every night um, to make sure the soul eaters don't come there. Um, so they were kind of mean to them. Anyway, so pretty much like a lot of stuff happens um, and Alice is kind of struggling or she has struggled her whole life because she saw the twins the night they killed everyone in the village and they didn't do anything to her and she thinks well am i evil or do i have something bad in me that made them spare me so she's kind of has this kind of character arc that um she has like the potential to go dark side but she struggles with that like her whole life and i've always loved character arcs like that so and it's kind of like a lighter version of um the character arc that um, Kara goes through in the um, the Thick of You series. Um, so yeah, this book was actually really good. I enjoyed it a lot and I loved Alice as a character because she was so good. She was just a really good heroine, with my favorite kind of heroine to read about. Um, and I just loved how strong she was and how she just kind of pushed through everything. And um, like even when it when she was like essentially the last hope of everyone and i think this is a fantastic book that people need to talk about more because it is a really good original um kind of fairy tale fantasy folklore book that you don't see a lot of like that aren't actual retellings and but i really really love her style of writing as well it really fits the genre very well and um, I really look forward to see what she writes next. And I'm pretty sure this is a standalone as well. But if it's not, I wouldn't mind reading more about the characters either. So I think overall I gave that one 4 out of 5 stars. <clears throat> After that, still sticking with retellings, I picked up Wildwood Dancing by uh, Juliet Marillier, which is one that was recommended to me by my friend Abigail a long time ago. But, and I've had, I bought it and I've had it for a long time, but I haven't gotten around to reading it because I knew I would want to read it at some point and I was really glad that I had it on my shelf. Um, so this is a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses, um, but it's, it's also has like some really cool twists to it. Um, uh, like the fact that this one, this is set in Romania, which is what I was thinking of when I was thinking of Hunted. Um, this, so, it actually has a lot of Romanian folklore peppered into it, which is kind of like, it's kind of a mixture of, like, Romanian folklore and fairy folklore. So, there are fairies, but, like, the Dark Court, which are usually the unseelie fairies, are actually, like, vampires. And, like, the, like, Dracula vampires, like, the original, traditional vampires from the Romanian folklore. Which I thought was a really interesting twist. Um, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff, like, um, references to the original, uh, vampire folklore. 
and also references to like original fairy folklore which kind of had like my folklorist and folklore buff in me going like yes <laughs> so i thought this was really cool premise but i also really loved the characters and the main character um <laughs> yeah i can never remember names but anyway i liked her and all her sisters and i liked her pet frog gogu he's really adorable i liked him even more later in the book um but i'm not gonna give away like spoilers um but yeah this was just a really really good retelling i i just i don't know i just loved everything about it i think i think it's just a really well written book it's just just such a lovely read and something very different and i just hated her cousin like i hated him so much he was just i he's just like one of those characters that you don't even love to hate you just hate and you want to punch them in the face so bad like just i had such a guttural reaction to him i don't i can't really explain why it's just he i don't know but i really hated him uh but yeah anyway but he played his purpose that he was supposed to in the story so that's from a writer's perspective yes i understand that um but anyway <laughs> i'm glad that the outcome happened as it did in this story um but anyway if you are a fan of like um jessica de george or entwined by heather dixon i would definitely suggest picking this one up because it's not as well known as some of the others but i think it's just as good as theirs and i think anyone who liked their books will enjoy this one as well because it's another really unique retelling of the 12 dancing princesses which i'm really surprised there are so many really unique tellings of that book um but anyway that was all the books that i read in uh april and i hopefully will have more read in may but we'll see um so i'll be back soon with my book haul for the month and um i'll see you then so bye